Ah, thank you, Madam Speaker Pro Tem. Um, got a lot of boards, going to try to get through them as fast as possible, and um, I, I wish there was some way you could set off an alarm if I start speaking too fast, because trying to, I always feel guilty when I do that, but I've, once again, I've had far too much caffeine. Um, I, I actually want to walk through a couple things. I, I meant today to be a day where I was going to come with things that were happy and hopeful and look at these great disruptions and we can crash the price of health care. But um, I'm going to have some of that. But once again, I think I need to actually reset some of the math. So we're going to walk through a few of these. Just because um, I, I'm just sort of enraged when I hear the White House put out materials, my brothers and sisters on the left put out materials, talk about this wonderful economy. The Biden economy, the Biden economics. So let's actually deal with some real life math. Um, amortized change in real disposable personal income per capita. If uh, under President Trump, it was amazing. It went up 5.1%. Under President Obama, it went up 1.2%. But under President Biden so far, and this is annualized per capita, your basic, your income, if you're an average American, is down 4.5%. You are poor today. You are poorer today than the day President Biden took office. That's, my, that's the left's idea of a wonderful economy? Come on. These are people. You think actually there would be this passion behind these microphones, particularly on the other side, saying... Something's wrong out there. Inflation and then salaries haven't kept up to the inflation and our spending and some of the things the Fed did set this off. We care instead of just trying to lie and cover it up and say things that just aren't true. So let's go into this a little more. There's just another way to calculate when you start to do change in real average wa er, wages for baseline middle class workers. And we've actually done adjustments on this for raises of income. So let's say you know, you're that truck driver. Your wages have gone up, but inflation has gone up more. You're 3.5% poorer now. You are poorer today than the day before Biden took office. Now, fascinating thing is those four years of Trump, whether you love the guy or don't love him, I don't care. The math is still the math. Your real purchasing power, you're up 9.8%. Do you see the delta here? Yet, how often do you hear this from the talking heads on cable television or in the print press here in Washington, D.C., that Americans, the working population in this country, you wonder why they're angry. They're poorer today than they were a couple years ago. And as I often come behind this microphone, is that moral? Now, you can make excuses why it is, but I, I, we have these debates here, and it's like our friends on the other side won't admit America's poor today because of what they did. And now we have to start dealing with the other side of this equation. So think of this. Because of inflation, America is poor. And something that is really hard for many people to process in their head, you do realize you and I have lived through probably the largest tax hike in modern history over the last two years. And you're going, huh? What do you think inflation does? OK, remember your high school economics class. Who does inflation help? Borrowers. Who's the biggest borrower in the world? United States. But who does it hurt? Workers and savers. So if you're that saver, you've been saving for your retirement, so your kid's education, or you're out there busting your backside. The fact of the matter is inflation devalued that savings. Who, who benefited? Who got that value? The borrowers. Who's the biggest borrower in the world? We are. This government. You've been taxed, and that wealth was transferred to basically we will pay down the future debt now with inflated dollars. And if we don't take on the U.S. sovereign debt, 
That's how you do it. It's not a crash. Governments, this isn't new. This has happened for hundreds and hundreds, actually thousands of years. Governments spend and spend and spend and borrow, borrow, borrow. And then when it's time to pay it back, you just inflate the currency. Just turn on the printing presses. 